Next on Worcester News Tonight, the woman at the center of the so-called House of Horrors case learning her fate in court. Plus, a ceremonial groundbreaking in Worcester. Construction for the new home for the soon-to-be Worcester Red Sox is underway. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm Anna Botari. Hundreds filled the lot at what will soon be the home of Polar Park. All there to see the official groundbreaking for the Worcester Red Sox new home. At the ceremony, former Canal District Alliance President Gene Zabinski said the idea of a AAA baseball in Worcester was once a pipe dream. But the dream took another step towards reality today. Our Cam Jandro is live at the site of the Polar Park. He joins us now live with more. Cam? Anna, 105 years ago today, Babe Ruth played his first game in a Red Sox jersey. Is that a coincidence? I'm not really sure. But some more baseball history was made today with the groundbreaking here at the Future Polar Park. It's expected to be one of the biggest economic development packages the city will ever see. And after all the waiting, the groundwork has finally been laid. It took years of negotiating and 11 months of planning, but Worcester finally broke ground on a AAA ballpark, and city residents are already waiting for opening day. I have four boys, that, and we live here in Worcester, and it'll be a great place just to come to a game. I mean, we love going to Boston and the Red Sox, but I think what's great for the families of Worcester is it's going to be affordable. Federal, city, and state officials were the ones to wield the shovels, but they weren't the only people celebrating. The ceremony was open to the public, and fans showed up in force. It's so exciting. I took time off from work to come here, so that's how, I'm so, how excited I am. It's the start of a, a whole new time in Worcester. It'll be, it'll be great for the Red Sox and great for Worcester. Worcester will soon be home to up-and-coming talent for the Boston Red Sox. Thursday wasn't just monumental for the city. It was big for the Major League team, too. The AAA franchise for the Red Sox is the lifeblood of, of the Red Sox and our baseball operations, so we're really excited to keep our AAA franchise as close to Fenway Park as possible. And team president Sam Kennedy has been with the Boston Red Sox for almost 20 years. He says the new ballpark will help the organization as a whole and create the next generation of Red Sox legends. Janet Marie Smith is a, is a real competitive advantage because they'll build a great ballpark that helps our player development system and that's really what we care about the most. The soon-to-be Worcester Red Sox will be leaving Pawtucket after more than 40 years in McCoy Stadium. Through all the talks, fans say they were confident Worcester would become the team's new home. Not at some time we would have a, a, a minor league team here in the city. Worcester's starting to invest a lot in the city. There's a lot of growth and development, so why not Worcester? You can always dream. Dreams come true. So. Now, Kennedy said the location of Polar Park is convenient because if they have to, players can get right on the Mass Pike and they can just fly up to Fenway Park. He also laughed while quoting Larry Lucchino, saying the next time fans are on this lot, they'll probably need a ticket. We're live in Worcester tonight. I'm Cam Jandro. Anna, back to you. Thanks, Cam. And I know you might be one of those people with one of those tickets. You're a big baseball fan. What are you looking forward to most about the new park? You know, I'm pretty simple. I'm just looking for some good baseball, see some of the guys rehabbing, but uh, I'm just so excited as a Worcester resident myself. Awesome. Thanks for that. Well, the ballpark is expected to be ready for spring of 2021, just in time for the start of the Worcester Red Sox season. Our Brittany Schaefer has more from some of the people who are working to make it happen. 2021. Shovels hit dirt Thursday and construction for the $100 million ballpark can officially begin. I think we should just take a moment to just look around, appreciate where you are now, and more so look forward to two years from today when this will literally be open for business. And when this ballpark opens and this neighborhood is redevelopment, we will have the opportunity to showcase to the world who we are here in Worcester because we are truly great. Hundreds were in attendance, many sporting Worcester Red Sox gear. City manager at Augustus says everyone at the ceremony watched history being made. The importance of this moment and what we celebrate today 
will be something that will live on for generations. This is one of those milestones in Worcester's history, like the building of City Hall or the opening of Union Station. Pivotal moments in the overall story of our great city. The city is about a year and a half away from the first game to be played in April 2021. Pawtucket Red Sox chairman Larry Lucchino says he knows the team made the right decision coming to Worcester. We know we have the right neighbors, the right naming rights agreement, the right business community, the right location for the next new and long chapter of the AAA Red Sox affiliation. Once again, thank you to every one of you from the heart. This is a giant step forward for all of us. City manager at Augusta says he is most excited for the big life moments to take place at Polar Park in April 2021 and says for everyone here today, big life moments were taking place and he's excited that this was a big moment in Worcester's history. Brittany Schaefer, Worcester News Tonight. We're getting a look at what Polar Park could look like on a summer night like tonight, once open. The city released these latest renderings created by Ballpark Design Advisor Janet Marie Smith. More than 800 suggestions came from nearly 20 fan planning sessions, which have been incorporated into the design. Smith says Worcester has so many points of pride from a baseball, cultural and multicultural standpoint. Prior to Thursday's groundbreaking, the Worcester Community Labor Coalition held a rally next to the future ballpark. The coalition is asking the city to sign a community benefits agreement for the construction of Polar Park. Activists chanted and held signs along the corner of Washington and Madison streets. The agreement would secure jobs for local workers, especially for communities of color and for women. It would also provide livable wages and benefits. Members of the coalition say economic development needs to be community development. What we're asking is fair. This is our city. It should be our jobs. The money that's going to be created here should be creating living, family living wages for all our residents. The work should be coming to folks here, not only during this time of construction, but also permanently. Worcester signed their first ever CBA earlier this year with YWCA of Central Massachusetts. A candlelight vigil will be held in Worcester tomorrow night to protest inhumane conditions faced by refugees at detention camps. The vigil is part of the national movement Lights for Liberty. Worcester is joining more than 500 cities across the U.S. holding events. Organizers Stacy Lord and Lara Murata say the detention camps migrant families are in after crossing the border are unsanitary and unhealthy, and it takes its time to take a stand. It's a peaceful protest. It's a way of showing solidarity to what's going on, that we don't approve of what's going on. You know, things need to change. Knowledge is power. Um, mm -hmm. And sometimes this style of a protest with just candles and um, City Councilor Sarai Rivera will be speaking at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Sending a brief message um, is really the best way to get that information out there. The vigil will start Friday night at 8 p.m. at 661 Main Street in the city. Two senior Homeland Security officials telling NBC News ICE raids are now scheduled to begin on Sunday. President Trump tweeted last month ICE would soon deport millions of undocumented immigrants across the U.S., then later announced that operation would be delayed at the request of the Democrats. The raids will target roughly 2,000 families in major cities across the U.S. The Blackstone mother found living with the remains of her three infants in her home was sentenced in court today. A judge found Erica Murray not guilty of second degree murder last month in what has been dubbed the House of Horrors case. But Murray will serve time on the lesser charges. Our Rosalind Flaherty has more. The mother at the center of the so-called Blackstone House of Horrors case is sentenced to 68 years in prison. Erica Murray has already served nearly five years, so it means she has one to two years left behind bars. She was hoping that she would not have to serve any additional time. In 2014, a neighbor discovered horrible conditions inside her home. Investigators later found the remains of three infants. Murray was acquitted of second-degree murder last month. Judge Janet Kenton Walker found her guilty of assault and battery on a child and cruelty to animals. I cannot take into account or undertake to punish her for conduct other than that for which she stands convicted. So I cannot punish her 
as some might want me to, for the fact that the remains of three babies were found in the closets. Judge Kenton Walker also sentenced her to five years probation, including mental health treatment, once she is released. She didn't intend to do it, and she didn't recognize that it was being done. But I don't think you can look at what happened to these kids and not say, you know, it's, it's, it's not a serious offense. It's serious. Her attorney says she will likely be eligible for parole in about a year. He says all of her children live with the father's family. In Worcester, Rosalind Flaherty, Worcester News Tonight. A Rutland police officer who took a selfie in front of a bar where a woman was stabbed to death last week is found to be in violation of the department's social media policy. The department launched an investigation after a picture of Sergeant Troy Chauvin in front of O'Connor's restaurant was put on Facebook. The post received complaints from the family of Amanda Dabrowski, the woman who was killed in a knife attack at the restaurant. Officials say they do not believe the post was malicious in its attempt. The report did not say if there was any disciplinary action against the sergeant. Well, let's check this out. Westboro police posting this video to their Facebook page. One of their officers taking time out of his day today to help a duck and her duckling safely cross Route 9. Good work by the officer and glad to see this had a very happy ending. 